everybody. Today I'm going to review one of the newest tools in Metabo's 18 volt cordless lineup and that's their eight and a half inch sliding compound miter saw. Now this is going to be powered off of any of Metabo's 18 volt lithium battery packs. But if you do pick up one of the kits, it's going to come with the best one that they make. One of their brand new Lee HD packs, which is 6.2 amp hours, and it's going to give this some tremendous run times and tremendous power. Now because it does have that 8.5 inch blade, and it also has some extreme cut capacities, whether you're a contractor, a carpenter, or maybe somebody that builds decks, this one saw is going to get the job done for you, and most likely you won't need to bring out a generator, extension cords, and a 10 or 12 inch sliding compound miter saw. It can cross cut a 2x12, and at a 45 degree angle it can still cut through a 2x8. Now what I want to do in this video is go over the different features they have built into this. We're going to take some closer up looks at the type of cuts that it can do, and then we're going to do some extreme runtime testing so you'll be able to see the amount of work you can get done on just one battery charge. Here's a closer up look at the saw, and I do want to point out there's no need to permanently attach this to any surface in order to use it, and you can easily carry it from one job site to the next, set it on any flat surface, and get right to work. Now as you do that, there will be five points touching the surface. Those are going to be rubber, so it's not going to scratch anything or move around on you. And that's under each of the four corners, as well as under the end of the table. Now that makes it very solid, it's not going to tip on you, and it is going to be a very sturdy surface, no matter what size board you're dealing with. But for the purpose of this video, I will be using a miter saw workstation. Next, I'm going to go ahead and mount it to that, and then we're going to go over the individual features that they have built into this. Okay, now that I have it mounted to the miter saw workstation, I want to show you the couple things you want to do prior to actually using it. Number one, you want to pull the lock pin right here just underneath of the carrying handle. To do that, you'll just press down on the saw just slightly, pull that out, and then release, and it's going to pivot up. Now to allow it to move back and forth, there's a red knob right here on the back. You'll just turn that counterclockwise to release it. Now the saw is going to slide freely. And really the last thing you need to do prior to using it is install the battery pack. You'll just slide it right on the top, and when you hear it click into place, it's going to be ready to go. The battery is going to be on a standard slide rail system. However, it's a little bit different to remove than a standard power tool. Metabo does not have any release buttons on the battery. So when you slide it in place and you hear the click, it is going to be installed but you won't be able to remove it by pressing anything on the battery. Right here behind the trigger you'll notice a black button. We'll go ahead and press in on that. That's the actual release and then the battery is going to slide right off. To turn on the saw they do have a safety measure built in. You must first press in on one of these buttons on the left or right hand side and then pull in on the trigger. If you just pull on the trigger, nothing's going to happen. You first have to press in on that, then pull in on the trigger, and then you can release this button on the side. That's going to activate the saw. But the good thing is it's not set up just for right-handed use. If you are left-handed, then you can hold it the opposite direction, press in on the button on this side, and turn it on exactly the same way. The motor has an electric brake, and what that means is as soon as you release the trigger, the blade is going to stop very quickly. The saw features an LED as well as a laser that can be activated independently or at the same time. If you notice on the top right here, next to the battery, you'll see two red buttons. The one on the back is going to be the laser. If we press that in, you can see it would light up your cut line. You can press it again, it's going to turn off. And then the one in front of that is going to be the LED light. Now you can activate those at the same time and you can see the laser as well as the LED light. And let's say you're making repetitive cuts and you forget to turn those off. After two minutes of inactivity, they're going to automatically turn off to conserve battery power. And then as soon as you lower the saw back down, they're both going to light back up. Depending on what you're working on, you may want to make a full plunge cut, meaning you're going to cut the board in half. Or maybe you only want to cut it to a certain depth. If that's the case, then here's a depth stop that's built in. You'll pull that forward, you're going to set the depth exactly where you want it, and then roll the lock nut down. That's going to prevent it from moving, and now you can see the blade is going to stop when that depth screw hits the depth stop. So it's not going to go all the way down making a plunge cut, and you can make repetitive cuts at the same depth by using this. To easily reset that back to a full plunge cut, all you'd have to do is take your depth stop, 
push it backwards. And now the saw is going to go all the way down. Setting the angle of your miter cut is very easy to do and it's very standard on any miter saw. The first thing you want to do is unscrew the miter lock handle. This is going to release tension from it, allowing it to move back and forth. And then this red tab right here is the detent release lever. You'll press that down and then you can rotate it left to right as you hold that down. Now it does have positive stops and if you release that and then you move it left to right, when it hits one of those it's automatically going to stop. In this case it's zero degrees. Now it does have all the common stops, so it's going to have zero degrees, 15 degrees, 22 and a half degrees, 30 degrees, and then 45 degrees. When it reaches any one of those preset ones, all you'll want to do is just tighten up the miter lock handle. That's going to lock everything down and you're going to be ready to cut. But if you do want to make some custom cuts or give some weird angles, then you can line up that red tab exactly with the angle that you want and then rotate the lock handle and that's going to lock it in at a specific angle for you. Now it does go to 47 degrees in the left or right hand position although the detent stop is going to stop at that 45 degree mark. What you'll want to do is hold in on the detent release lever, go past the 45 mark, line it up with the 46 or the 47 and then screw the miter lock handle down to lock it in place. If you want to make a beveled cut, meaning not straight up and down, and instead you want to cut it at an angle, the first thing you want to do is move the sliding rear fence all the way over. This is going to prevent the saw from hitting it, and then you'll lock it back down into place. And then the next step is going to be to take the bevel lock valve, go ahead and just move that down. That's going to release the bevel lock, and now you can move the saw to your desired degree. All you'll want to do is maybe put it on 45 degrees, raise that back up, it's going to lock it in place, and now you'll be able to make a beveled cut. To have extra stability when you're dealing with a larger piece of lumber, the table does extend in both directions. There's a red knob here and a red knob here. You'll just go ahead and loosen those up, that's going to release the tension, and then both sides will slide out. This is going to greatly increase the width of your table, and it's going to make it much more sturdy, especially when you're dealing with a longer piece of wood. Now I do want to point out, the one that's on the right hand side even has a little depth stop. You can pull that up and you can make repetitive cuts the same length, especially if you're dealing with a very long board. They do include this quick release clamp that can be installed vertically on the left or right hand side or horizontally on the left or right hand side. There's going to be a hole behind the fence that's going to slide right down in. At this point you can press it on the red button, it's going to drop down and it's going to prevent you from having to screw it all the way down. At this point we can take the large knob on the top, just rotate that clockwise, it's going to hold the board in place and as you cut it you don't have to worry about your hands being anywhere near the blade. Now let's say you're dealing with a different piece of wood, maybe a 2x2 two two, or even a 2x4 and you want to hold it against the fence but this angle is not going to work for you. You can loosen that up pull it out of the back, and then they also have a hole right here on the front on the left and right hand sides. Now this will allow you to also slide it in those holes, and then you can press it horizontally against the fence. When it comes time to change the blade on the saw, it is very easy to do, however the first thing you'll always want to do is remove the battery pack, that way you don't accidentally cut the saw on hurting yourself. Now the tool that you're going to need to do this is included along with the saw and it looks like a standard Allen key. One side is going to be a hex side, the other side is going to be a number two Phillips. This is the one and only tool that you're going to need to change the blade and it's extremely easy to do. The first thing you want to do is take that number two Phillips side, loosen up the Phillips screw right here as well as right here and we can remove the protective bar covering up our access to the arbor bolt underneath. This bolt has reverse threads, which means normally you would take something, turn it counterclockwise to loosen it, but that's actually going to tighten this bolt. To loosen it up, we'll need to turn it clockwise, or like you would normally tighten something, and that's going to remove it. Now to prevent the arbor from spinning, you'll see a big red button right here. You'll just press and hold that in, then stick the Allen side of that key in the end of the arbor bolt, rotate it clockwise and you'll feel that pin drop down. That's going to be the arbor lock and now you can put force onto it and break it free. 
Now you can go ahead and run that the rest of the way out by hand. Take the bolt as well as the washer behind it, set it down and don't lose it, and then you'll take your arbor plate and just go ahead and pull that off. Now this is keyed and it can only go in there a certain way. At this point you can take your clear lower blade guard, pull it up out of the way, and then grab onto the blade, move it left to right until it pops off, and then you can easily change it out with another one. Now keep in mind, all the blades are going to be directional, so you do need to put them one in the correct position. You'll lower that lower blade guard back down, take your arbor plate, feed it back on the end of the arbor, and then you'll take the bolt as well as that washer, put it in the hole, and spin it counterclockwise. This is going to tighten it up. At this point, you want to take your finger, press in on that red button, take your tool, slide it in the end of the bolt, and then rotate it counterclockwise. Now you don't need to wring this off, you really only need to put moderate pressure on it until it tightens up. Then you can take that protective bar, slide it over top of the screw, and then tighten everything back down. To test out those cut capacities, here it is cross cutting a 2x12. And here it is cutting a 2 by 8 at 45 degrees. As far as cut quality goes, I will be using the stock blade, which is a 40 tooth Metabo blade. We're going to cross cut this 1 by 12. And then we'll take a look at the edge after we're done to see what type of job it did. And taking a closer look at our cut, you can see the very end of it had very minimal tear out. And then it was a very nice smooth clean cut from one side to the other. Now lastly something you always want to keep in mind, especially if you're using a saw indoors, is dust collection. The dust bag on this does do a good job at collecting most of the larger debris. But the very fine dust still makes it into the air. And what we'll do is make two cuts to this board to prove that. The first cut's going to be using just the dust bag. Then I'll remove that and hook a dust extractor up to it. We'll make the exact same cut and see the difference. So I just turned the dust extractor on. All we'll need to do is remove the bag. We'll plug it right in the same port where that goes. And now all the dust is going to get sucked into the vacuum. Using a fully charged 6.2 amp hour Lee HD battery pack and a brand new Diablo blade, we're going to see how many cuts we can get through a standard 2x4 on just one charge.
147 cuts through a standard 2x4 on one 6.2 amp hour battery charge. So now you've seen Metabo's 8.5 inch cordless sliding compound miter saw for yourself. And like I showed you in those clips, the different features that they have built into this really make it nice. The clamp that can go vertical as well as horizontal. The table extensions that are going to slide in or out and lock in place. And then the one on the right even has the stop built in. Makes it really easy to do repeat cuts as far as the same length goes. And it is going to be much more compact when you don't need that extra stability and you're working with some smaller pieces of wood. Now my favorite feature is going to be the LED and laser light combo that can be operated independently and they do a great job at lighting up what you're cutting through. Now as far as cordless miter saws go, this one is going to have the largest blade size on the market today coming in at 8.5 inches. Most of the other ones are using standard circular saw size blades which are going to be 7 and a quarter inch. And if you look at them side by side, the 8.5 of course is going to have greater cut capacities. Now because this can cross cut a 2x12 and then it can do a 45 on a 2x8, most people would get by with this just fine and they wouldn't need a larger 10 or 12 inch corded sliding compound miter saw unless you are making some massive cuts. Now you do want to keep in mind the kit comes with one 6.2 amp hour Lee HD battery. You're going to be able to get a ton of work done on just one charge, but when this runs out, keep in mind it only comes with one battery. If you want an additional battery, you would have to buy that separately or buy another tool that's part of a kit that would come with additional batteries in order to power this. If you're doing a lot of cutting with it, it would be a real good idea to pop this off, let's say when you go to lunch, put it on the charger so when you come back it would be on a full charge and you can continue going all day long. Now I do want to point out that this does come with a three year warranty. So as long as you register it when you buy it, the battery, the charger, as well as the saw is going to be covered. And if you ever have a problem with it, Metabo will fix that for you free of charge. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.